Hey guys, um, this is for one of my subscribers who asked um, what this is, Chronicles of Jeremiel. Um, to save time, I'm just going to read a portion of the introduction so you can understand what it is. Um, the publication of the present chronicle, which I have now called the Chronicles of Jeremiel, will now contribute much to the elucidation of many problems connected therewith and with biblical apocrypha in general. It combines the Yosapon with the Yashar, i.e. it is a continuous narrative from the creation down to the destruction of the temple, and contains a great number of either unknown or little known apocryphal texts in what I believe to be their original form. It must be borne in mind that the Book of Jubilees, for instance, has not yet been found in its old Hebrew form. Only parallels to portions of it are known to exist in Hebrew writings. The whole book has thus far disappeared. How old now are these parallels, and in what relation do they stand to the lost original? The same may be said of the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs, and of every, and of ever so many other old apocryphal writings to which we shall refer in the course of our investigation. <clears throat> Here in this chronicle, we, we now have a ser series of similar texts, all in Hebrew the value of which remains to be proved, but which I have no hesitation in declaring to be very great. We are in the fortunate position that this chronicle is not like the book of Yashar, a continuous narrative by one author, who has mixed up more or less skillfully various elements and has utilized the old text to make a single book of them, in a manner which obliterates the traces separating one from the other and making it almost impossible for us to follow each of the component parts to their original source. Here, on the contrary, we have a compilation in its most primitive state, and therefore much more valuable from the critical point of view. The texts are placed one next to the other in their integrity without any attempt at changing their original form or of weaving them together and combining them in any artificial manner. It is, on the whole, more a mechanical compilation than a scientific composition. The compiler of the complete work, which contains not merely a chronicle, but a host of other texts, is not Jeremiah himself, nor is the date of the compilation identical with that of the texts which make this volume. As will be shown later on, some of these texts go back to remote antiquity. Others may be put down as of a mere recent origin, but one and all of the texts in the Chronicle proper are by many centuries older than the date at which the compiler connected them into one volume. So, as you can see, um, I mean, we, most of us know that, like, the Bible, the canon, was transliterated. So you lose a lot in translation, like, whether it was, like, Whatever, I'm not a scholar, but you know what I'm saying. Like, wh whether it went from, like, Latin to Greek and then to English or whatever the case might be. Obviously, a lot of people use a Strong's Concordance and things like that when they're trying to figure out the original meaning of a word. It's one of the reasons that most people have no idea about the word firmament and things like that. And I, I only mention... I only mention Flat Earth so much because, number one, the Masonic Order is the ones that came up with the, the globe Earth. And they torture little kids and they do horrible things to people and they are a horrible organization that worships Lucifer. So if they worship Lucifer, the Catholic Church has a Lucifer telescope and somehow they're connected going back to ancient times with the Illuminati and all that stuff then why are you still like not searching to find out if you can even find something that proves that the earth is a globe or that satellites are real or like and I've even had people say when I had I, I took the the video down that I did of um, talking about satellites and stuff like that because I'm here to read scripture. I really, I'm not even here to like defend Jonathan Cleck except that he's a brother in Christ and that what he is talking about is truth. And the Lord told me to release the information that I had. But I'm not here for for you know only that reason. I'm here to read to you the scriptures that have been dug up that we have access to right now. And it's 2019 and as of the year 2000 this became the third day this is the day that Jesus rises from the dead and Jesus is the Word of God so the Word of God is rising from the dead right now and you have a chance to read this 
before they try to put a lid on it, if they even could, before Jesus Christ returns and, and takes his bride. Now, we don't necessarily know how everything is going to play out. But there's so much heresy. There is so much garbage that is portraying itself as, as Jesus Christ. Like music, like Hillsong. And, and any band that's affiliated with Hillsong that fills stadiums of 26,000 people. That's the broad way. All you have to do is look at the symbolism and the names of these bands and the pyramid symbols and all the crap that they put in it. Can't you see it? Can't you just see that it's evil? Just because something makes you feel good when you hear it and you're like, oh, that's so uplifting. Men's hearts are evil. Our hearts are evil. Do you know how hard it is to fight yourself every single day, the sinfulness that we have inside of us, to fight that? And this is a war. And that's why I mention Flat Earth so much is because people don't even know the playing field that we're, that we're battling on. How can you fight a war and you don't know where you are? How could you go to Vietnam and you think that you're in China? How could you go to, you know, f fight on D-Day and think that you're in, like, Switzerland? You can't. You, would, you wouldn't make it. You, every, every battle that's ever been fought, they go through extensive training about the battlefield. Why do you think that is? Because if you know the battlefield, then you can prepare for war. If you don't know where you are, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know that you're a son of the living God made in his image, then you're going to fail. And there's so much deception. There's so much indoctrination through the colleges, through the universities. I mean, look at what they're doing to people with colleges. Like, you owe so much money, you're going to be in debt. Like, my dad's friend's a lawyer. He's like 60 years old, and he's still paying off his college loans to be a lawyer. Why did you even go? I, th I counted a blessing that my dad went bankrupt when I was in college so that I don't have to pay those college loans because I'm working next to kids now. You know, I have worked next to tons of kids, and they're paying three, four, five, six, eight, nine hundred dollars in student loans, and I'm not paying anything. And we get the same job because I built up my skill set while they were going to college, and all these people wanted to hire me because I knew what I was doing. And those kids had no clue, but they took them because they had a college degree. So they got a piece of paper. I got nothing. Except that I know how to do the job. And then, you know, let the chips fall where, they, you know, fall where they're going to fall. Because the people see, oh, this kid's mad smart because he's done this 15 other times and had to work his way up the ladder 15 times. So they choose the one with the, the experience. And I've heard people say what I'm talking about. Just like, you know, eating dinner, I hear people's conversations and that's what they're talking about. Like, oh, I can't get a job because I don't have any experience. How do you get a job without experience? College kids can't even get jobs. And... In these colleges, they teach you that you evolve from an ape. Then why is there apes? They're still apes. Nobody's ever seen a human being evolve past their current point because it's all a joke. And they teach you that so that when the fallen angels come back pretending to be aliens, that people think that they're going to evolve. They're not going to evolve to anything. You're going to devolve and be destroyed by the all-living mighty God because you were deceived. It's the great deception. And this globe earth thing is part of the deception and i don't care who that you listen to what prophecy channel what place you go to that tells you that the earth is a globe it's not even nasa even nasa's own website in nasa means de deception it means deception in hebrew even their own website says at the bottom right hand corner or on the page it says these are computer renderings they're not even real. So just wake up. Just wake up and, and realize that it's important. I tell my parents this stuff and they're like, oh, it's not even important. Who cares what the shape of the earth is? Really? How are you going to see Jesus? Every eye is going to see him. How are you going to see him when he comes back if it's round? And that's not important to you. But drinking wine and getting drunk all night long. And, I, you know, I drink a beer once in a while. I'm not saying anything about drinking. I could care less what you drink. But, you know, getting, like, drinking wine all night, you know, drinking two bottles of wine at night and sitting and watching, like, X-Men or, like, sitting and watching, like, you know, cable television for three hours till you pass out and go to bed and you don't even pray goodnight to God or thank Him or ask Him to forgive you for your sins each day. That's what's, that's important. You know what I mean? Like, 
How is that? How is that living a Christian life? How is that walking in the spirit and the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done for us? He came off of His mighty throne and came down all the levels of heaven to go into Mary's stomach. And most people don't even know the truth of that story. They don't know that the, that the fallen angel statues crumbled beneath His feet as He was a child. They don't know all the miracles that He did before. You hear about in the canon when he was 12. That one story that he was 12 years old and they couldn't find him in the, because he was preaching in the temple. There's endless amounts of information about the infancy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you heard them, you would be like, wow, that makes sense. And it, it, it just completes the story. It's the parable of the three lumps. And that's... There's a video downloading now that I did earlier today, and I didn't even want to make that video. I really didn't, but I the Lord pressed me very... He's been pressing me very hard lately to just get the information that I know out. Just get it out. It doesn't I don't care what anyone thinks of me. I really don't care. In my humanness, maybe, you know, I'm like, well, you know... They're making racial comments against me when I say things about Obama. You know, they're they're saying all these things. But, you know, they crucified our God. They crucified him. So if I got to deal with mean comments about being, you know, pale face, whitey or whatever people want to say about me or, you know, that, that I'm this or that, I'm, I don't care. You know, the Lord suffered for us. And what are, what are we suffering what are we suffering? We're going to suffer if we're still here and he doesn't take us out. You know, we're going to suffer some of the things that these third world countries have had to suffer through. You know, we've heard like we spend more on garbage bags than the rest of the world spends on everything else. That's sick. And you look at all the people, like my aunt Janet, she was so, so, so mean to me growing up. Like looked down on us like we were poor and stuff. Didn't even matter how much money we had. She always looked down on us like we were poor and uneducated because she had like three master's degrees. And she just would sit and watch QVC all day long. Just looking at crap to buy. It's idol worship. It's it's worshiping money and worshiping things that will never get you anything in life. And it took for my house to be burnt down to understand that. In the middle of January, watching your whole life burn in front of you. And that's what's going to happen. The world was destroyed last time by water, and this time it's going to be destroyed by fire. And all the people like that say, like on my two confirmations video, like saying like I look anxious or I look like I look like, you know, I'm I'm upset. At the time when I was doing those those first videos, like recently, the confirmation things, I was upset. The Lord was saying some serious things to me, and it was. It's troublesome when God talks to you like he's the almighty God, you know, and if you never have gone through that before, you don't know what it's like. I, can, I can't even imagine what it's like to be like Jonathan Kleck sometimes, you know, and you saw his, his recent rant, I'm sure if you're watching this, you've probably seen his recent video he did, he's, he's just been beaten guys, he's been beaten by people, evil people that just don't even have any clue what they're talking about. Just mean comments. You don't need to leave. Just leave. Don't say those things. Because these things, every single thing, every single thing that people say is being recorded. Every comment that you leave on someone's channel is being recorded. You have an angel that is with you every day and they go up. At sundown, they go up and they tell it everything you did to the Lord Jesus Christ. And not that he doesn't know it already, but they record these things for him. And you don't want to have those things that you left on somebody's channel mean things, regardless of how you feel. Unless you're talking about, you know, uplifting the spirit of God in this world. Or talking about th things that people are doing that are incorrect and they're not according to the word of God. You shouldn't be saying anything. And if you do say those things, say it. In truth and in love that you care about these people, that you don't want them to be wrong. You don't want them to, to say something that is not true. Or to back off when they should be going forward. When they find the truth and they're saying the truth and then they, they back out of it because they're afraid they're going to lose some of their congregation or they're afraid of what other people are going to think about them. 
Oh no, I didn't say that. No, that's not what you should be. You should be saying, yeah, I like, like actually like Nicodemus said to the Pharisees. They said, oh, you're in league with Jesus Christ. We hope you get his lot in the next life or whatever. And he's like, amen and amen. That's right. I hope I get his lot in the next life. They treated our Lord Jesus Christ as a malefactor, like he's nothing. That's what they treated him like. You think that that kind of stuff, you think the, the way they treated our Lord Jesus Christ, you think that people would be like, yay, and going to all these like, you know, stadium singing like, oh, I feel so good. Nah, man, Jesus said, you know, blessed are those who suffer. Blessed are those who are persecuted and, and, you know, deal with all this crap for his namesake, you know. But that don't come easy and that don't come nice. You know, it's not nice. It's not a nice feeling. Not here anyway. But the Lord blessed me. He gave me a beautiful wife and a, a happy life with her and my children. He gave me my children back. I didn't deserve that. You know, and I'm sure we all have things the Lord has given us that we don't deserve. And I'm sure we all have things that we're suffering from or that we, you know, health problems or, or you know, mental instability, you know, worrying about what is going to come next because we're human beings. It's just natural. Those things just happen. But... Jesus is supposed to be the one that we rely on to get us through the storm. And if you don't even know what what shape the world is, how can you even know, like, you know, how can you even be sure of, of the boat that you're in, you know, sailing with him? You know what I mean? How can you even be sure about anything that you've ever learned if you don't understand the world that we live in you don't understand who you are you don't understand why you're here being tested and so i'm not saying i know all the answers to those things but i'm sure that i know a lot more than sadhu sun sadhu sundar and jim baker and joel austin and all these false prophets and all these people scamming people for money and all these people that are Judases and they're going to suffer in the torments of hell and all these people are following them into a pit. And Jesus said, damn any of these people that, that give those people a hearing. Damn them all. And that's why he says, I did not come for peace. I came with a sword. And daughter will be against father and father against son. And all the family members will be against each other. That's what he came for, to do that. Because men's hearts are wicked. And this is a true testing. Can you make it? Can you make it in this life? Being attacked by demons and loving your neighbor as yourself, even though they're beating the crap out of you? Praying for the people that are spearing you and putting a crown of thorns on your head? Can you, can you do that? It's hard. It's not easy to do that. It's not easy to, to pray for someone when they're trying to take your kids away. It's not easy to pray for someone when they are lying about you maliciously to end your, your happiness. It's not easy. It's not easy to forgive someone that beat the crap out of you. It's not. But that's what Jesus said to do. And obviously I'm speaking about my own self. I don't know what you're going through. I pray for all of you. I pray for you. Each of every person that says pray for this or that thing, I always pray for those people. Even if I say, like in my mind, I forget what your name was, I remember that you asked for it and I pray for it. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. I, I don't want to run too long, but the main reason that I was doing this specific video was to tell one of my subscribers about who Jeremiah is so as I read more of this to the listeners that you understand that it's directly from ancient Hebrew manuscripts it's the closest that you can get to the ancient Hebrew manuscripts of the Apocrypha which is the third testament the books that were removed go read in your canon and I mean this kindly when I say this sorry I have a New England accent maybe that's how I mean sometimes but go read in the canon the parable of the three lumps and that is what I'm talking about there are three dispensations of scripture the Old Testament the New Testament 
and one that we had before, but it was taken out and buried and we get it back at the end. The wine, the best wine was saved for last. And funny, it was at a wedding. We're about to be, the bride is about to be taken. So I don't know when that is. Anybody who says they do, they don't. They don't know the exact day or hour. Maybe they have a pretty close pretty close guess, but I'd rather be surprised personally. We got a lot of work to do down here. But uh Oh, in the last video I I meant to say I went off on a tangent, but I meant to say that there are three swords. The Lord said two will suffice. There is a third that's spoken of in the super gospel. So I pray that this might have blessed your life. And notice also that the Lord said, bring two swords. But then when Simon Peter goes to protect Jesus, he goes to cut, he cut the man's ear off and Jesus healed the man's ear. Signaling that he can even, he doesn't want to use violence, even though it was so he could go to the cross. He never would use violence. What he wanted was to show that he could heal even his enemy's ear to listen to what he has to say. So... I pray this blesses your life and God bless you guys and have a great night.